What does Bitcoin have to do with the environment? There are so many articles these days and headlines and tweets about Bitcoin as this environmental hazard. Elon Musk is tweeting about it. The price of Bitcoin is falling. There are so many things happening around Bitcoin right now. The whole thing is kind of confusing to me. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around what this digital internet object, what does this have to do with like trees and the ocean and the environment? Like, where is this overlap happening? My big picture question here is exactly how bad for the environment is Bitcoin? This is a really hard question to answer. And in order to unpack it and get a little bit of a better sense of what is going on here, I called up Nick Carter. He is a founding partner at Castle Island Ventures, which is a firm that invests in cryptocurrency infrastructure. He's thought about this a lot, and he even wrote an article for HBR recently about this very topic. Nick's gonna give us his take on how exactly Bitcoin consumes energy. You know, can we really measure its impact on the environment in any precise way? And what can we do to make this whole crypto industry more sustainable? Could you start, Nick, by explaining to me the relationship between Bitcoin, this digital object, and the physical world? Yeah, that's a great question. Bitcoin basically works by making the ledger entries costly. To create a new entry to that ledger, you have to prove that you have incurred a genuine computational cost. Because this is actually a very considerable computational cost, it means that there are physical costs associated with that, so energy to power the computation. And that's where the real world comes in. Uh, that's where mining comes in. What does that actually look like in the physical world? Well, miners basically draw energy from the grid or from even non-grid sources, uh, and they power these machines that are called ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits. So these are rectangular machines. They're kind of this size. Typically, miners mine at scale. So imagine shipping containers full of thousands and thousands of these machines stacked next to each other. They are doing a single piece of computation over and over and over again. The machines are incredibly loud. So if you've ever been to a mine, it's this high-pitched, deafening whine. So it's incredibly unpleasant, really, to actually have, uh, you wouldn't want to mine in your living room. The vast majority of Bitcoin mining operations are industrial. They'll be drawing, you know, several megawatts of power. They will, you know, be in typically big warehouses and they'll pull in fresh air, run them through the miners and then vent this hot air out the other side. Uh, and so it becomes a heat management problem. And then of course you have to have a predictable energy source. It sounds like my laptop sort of in the middle of the workday, just overheating and being super loud. Um, Except, you know, like 130 decibels kind of thing. Yeah, almost like an actual mine in some ways. Can you explain to me the controversy kind of around Bitcoin as it relates to the environment? Bitcoin produces this budget to miners of around $20 billion annualized. Miners will burn a lot of real world resources to acquire those Bitcoins. It's a competitive free market. And this manifests in the consumption a lot of energy. In real world terms, this means that Bitcoin itself has grown to consume probably a third to a half a percent of the world's uh, total electricity uh, production. What other industry is comparable to, to Bitcoin in terms of energy spent? I would say it's, it's uh, in the same league as, for instance, the resources and energy apportioned to the extraction of gold, for instance. Uh, okay. Bitcoin actually might be slightly higher now. When it comes to this, this kind of growing concern about Bitcoin as it relates to the environment, where do you think that the discourse is lacking right now or, or needs to be a little bit more nuanced? Yeah, I think it's totally legitimate to be concerned about Bitcoin's uh, energy footprint and its carbon outlay. The discourse, I think, has been weak. And in particular, it's been plagued by these simplifying assumptions. So for instance, it's kind of not that difficult to determine Bitcoin's actual energy outlay. But then to go from energy consumption to carbon emissions that's a real difficult challenge, right? Because you have to determine what kind of energy sources are being used to produce the electricity. There's a lot of uncertainty involved in that. We don't really know where all these miners are operational. 
We know a good chunk of them are in China. If you actually look at the four provinces where mining is popular, two of them are very coal powered, two of them are very hydro powered. And so there's considerable heterogeneity. We know the Bitcoin mining accumulates in these places where there's an excess or a stranded energy like Sichuan and Yunnan, where there's very abundant hydro resources, which are otherwise not reaching the grid. So there is a lot of malleability in terms of the energy mix the miners are using. And that is the thing that you have to triangulate to guess at the actual carbon output, the climate externality of the system. Do you, th- do you think that a lot of the criticism around this issue is stemming from like a fundamental skepticism in Bitcoin's value um, and, and, and the fact that, you know, maybe some critics don't believe in its, in, in, in its value in the real world. And so any, any amount of energy consumption is too much. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, there's plenty of industries that consume a lot of energy that, you know, critics of Bitcoin take advantage of. But the reason they're sort of okay with that energy outlay is because they see the utility of that system. So everyone's pretty much okay with the existence of air travel because they take advantage of it, even though it has gigantic carbon footprint. Now, Bitcoin is this dematerialized thing that is not tangible and it's not even really perceptible. What is the utility of Bitcoin that critics of it aren't seeing uh, in, in, your, in your view? So Bitcoin is relevant to the extent that uh, your local monetary and financial system doesn't function that well. So in the US where laws are respected, where we have extremely stable you know, capital markets, where the currency isn't actively being debased that much, people aren't as worried about the confiscation of their wealth, either explicitly or through inflation or debasement. That's only a small fraction of the world. Most of the world's population actually does live in a largely inflationary or authoritarian environment. They might deal with capital controls. They might deal with expropriation with a banking system that doesn't work uh, or a bank system which is you know, plundered by the government from time to time. These issues that Bitcoin is designed to abate You, you did acknowledge at the top of the conversation that, you know, the environmental concerns are legitimate um, and it's just a matter of kind of getting more precise about the, the carbon footprint of Bitcoin. Um, what, what changes would you recommend? As far as the industry itself, I think Bitcoin miners should engage in self-regulation and disclose the nature of the energy that they're using. I think as we're seeing this transition from largely unaccountable Chinese miners to more accountable US-based miners, we actually will see more of this because US capital markets are increasingly coming with sort of political and ESG dictates. And as a consequence, I think we will see these US miners being more proactive in terms of disclosure. Um, You can reconfigure your grid to produce abundant renewable energy, which I think should obviously be the end goal of all of this. Bitcoin consumes the energy that's available to it. And uh, if, if those energy sources are you know, non-renewable, I think we should be thinking more carefully about the grid itself, as opposed to trying to stigmatize certain uses of energy. Ultimately, the climate crisis goes far, far beyond Bitcoin. It's more of a question of, can we construct and arrange the grid in such a way that we're producing abundant green energy. And that's not ultimately a Bitcoin question. That's just a societal question. Nick, thanks so much for chatting with me today. This has been really helpful. Thank you. My pleasure.